If you want to watch a movie that will mess with your head, it'll be hard to find something better than a good old fashioned psychological horror. By maintaining the same level of violence and depravity you'd find in your regular genre picture, but also focusing on personal feelings or emotions, these movies can burrow right under your skin and nest there uncomfortably for a long time. With that in mind then, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 seriously messed up psychological horror movies. Number 10, Possessor. From the mind of Brandon Cronenberg, the son of horror icon David, Possessor is a twisted and disturbing sci-fi tale that pits ultraviolence against mind-melding psychological storytelling. It follows Tazia Voss, an assassin working for a secretive organization with the technology to let their killers invade other people's bodies. However, after losing control, Voss ends up battling inside the body of a possessed host. You can certainly see that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree here, as the younger Cronenberg has the same affinity for gruesome practical effects as his father. This is a bloody movie to the max, but what makes it stand out is the focus on psychology. The inner torment of the protagonist and the literal fighting inside someone's mind make the film visceral and intense. In this movie, the hero doesn't need weapons or strategy to win, they just need mental fortitude. It's a literal battle of wits. Number 9. The Skin I Live In Seeing someone suffer for the sake of science or cosmetics can be truly horrifying, which is why plenty of horror movies play with the idea of human experimentation. The Skin I Live In follows a talented plastic surgeon played by Antonio Banderas as he performs experiments on an unwilling captive woman. As he continues to work on a new kind of powerful synthetic skin, you learn that his unfortunate guinea pig has a shocking connection to his past. Now, the thing that throws this film over the edge is the shocking final twist, which I won't spoil here, other than to say it's an unsettling revelation that recontextualizes everything you've seen so far. The dense, unraveling plot, tension, and chilling performance from the legendary Banderas in one of his career best showings all come together to make this movie a cocktail of disturbing horror. Number 8. Session 9 Session 9 follows a small team of workers tasked with removing the asbestos from an old asylum. While there, tensions begin to mount between the team, all while one of them listens to tapes of old sessions from the hospital, which does just sound like a recipe for disaster, right? As you might expect, things soon take a turn for the supernatural. This is the kind of horror that might not be everyone's cup of poison, as it's got much more of a slow build than the regular scare fests of Hollywood and focuses more on atmosphere over massive thrills. But that's what makes it such a treat, as the slow, macabre build-up leads to some grotesque revelations towards the end. It also remains almost entirely ambiguous, putting the onus on you to fill in the blanks. And nothing is more messed up than the imagination of a viewer. Number 7. Apostle you can learn a lot of lessons from horror movies. For example, if there's a mysterious island populated by a religious cult, you probably shouldn't go there. Also, if your sister was taken and forced to join a cult, then don't try to save her, it's not gonna end well. Finally, if in some crazy scenario that those two things are combined, just stay the hell away. Just really don't do it. No matter how much you might want to save her, it's only going to go wrong. Apostle is a movie that combines all of these ideas as it follows a scarred man named Thomas as he enters a religious commune on a remote Welsh island. Thomas's mission is to find his sister, who of course was kidnapped by this cult. What makes the movie so fascinating though is that you get a profoundly psychological flick behind all of the extreme body horror, violence and tension. The whole thing builds up slowly as you see the cult have a leadership crisis and come to learn about the personal demons and struggles of the leading character. This gives the film some natural substance behind the stylish visuals and more twisted moments to come. But don't feel like it's completely free from scares, as the few aforementioned twisted moments will definitely stick with you whether you want them to or not. Number 6. Willard Willard centers on a quirky man struggling with bullying at home and work. However, his look soon changes as he develops a relationship with a horde of rats, leading him to seek revenge against those who have wronged him. While the rats are naturally a big part of the movie's focus, the real star of the show is the titular Willard. His mental duress and torment make him out to be a misunderstood victim and a terrifyingly creepy recluse at the same time. Of course, the casting also helped there. 
Sometimes an actor steps into a role and all you can think is, damn, they were born to play this part. Well, the notorious Hollywood oddball Crispin Glover as an unsettling man obsessed with rats is so perfect that it almost feels like destiny. He brings a sense of uncanniness to the role thanks to his contorted facial expressions, lanky frame, and bizarre line delivery. It's a movie that fuses the dwindling mind of a tortured soul with the brutality of just rats eating people alive. So yeah, talk about a winning combo. Number five, Sacrilege. It doesn't get more psychological than manifestations of fear. So step aside Pennywise because you're not the only horror movie character with the ability to bring a person's worst nightmares to life. Still, unlike the infamous clown, the villain of this movie is not one being, but rather a whole village. Sacrilege follows a group of lifelong friends as they head off to the remote village of Mabon for a fun getaway. Where they arrive, they find themselves battling against a pagan cult, because of course it's cults again, that plan to offer them up as sacrifices to their god. And they do this by drugging them and making them face their worst fears. The film's concept certainly lends itself to the typical stranger in a village becoming a victim of their traditions schlock, but the focus on overcoming and surviving against your own fear does give the movie an edge, making it more than your average horror flick. It provides each character with a chance to actively fight their own mind, leading to some truly compelling moments. Besides the focus on character building and psychology, it's also a harrowing viewing experience generally, with some brutal hallucinations and shocking death scenes. Number four, Be My Cat, a film for Anne. Celebrity culture will always go hand in hand with obsession, as people look to the stars on the big screen and naturally idolize them. Typically, this is pretty harmless as no one ends up getting hurt, but there are times when that obsession spirals into something entirely unhealthy and even toxic. And that's what this disturbing as hell movie is all about. A found footage movie about a filmmaker who has an unrelenting obsession with actress Anne Hathaway, the film follows his extreme lengths to try and convince her to star in a movie that he's making. Naturally, things twist out of control as the filming progresses and his mental state continues to unravel. If you struggle with watching cringe-worthy movies, then this one might be a challenge for you. It's a simple and low-key experience thanks to the lack of budget and the found footage format, but despite that, it will still have you clenching your jaw. This mostly comes from Adrian Tafair, the movie's director and star. He doesn't play the part like an over-the-top psycho as a Hollywood movie might have done. Instead, he feels like a hyped-up child with power, making the film all the more unsettling. Number three, men. The movie follows Harper, a woman who ventures to the countryside after a devastating personal tragedy. This escape, however, isn't the break she's looking for, as a slew of men in the village, all played by Rory Kinnear, cause her to feel uncomfortable, unhappy, and even unsafe. As if things couldn't get worse, there also seems to be a primal evil that's stalking her. Naturally, the film has a lot to say about the plight of being a woman in the 21st century, and the men in the movie are unapologetically apathetic to her struggles and concerns, leading to rising tension and fear for her safety. While the gimmick of Rory Kinnear playing them all could end up feeling like some twisted Polar Express Uncanny Valley situation, it actually heightens the metaphor as it makes Harper feel entirely isolated. Plus, it's not just totally metaphor either, and the final scene will have you spewing your lunch up if you're not careful. Number two, Andy Christ. Andy Christ is a movie created by the infamous Lars von Trier, a director known for his beautiful cinematography and utterly shocking scripts. The movie follows a married couple grieving over the loss of their infant son. They travel to their remote cabin in the woods in an effort to heal, but things devolve as their marriage crumbles and violence rears its ugly head. You'll see some unflinchingly abhorrent stuff in this flick, including, but not limited to, child slash animal death, unsimulated sex and genital mutilation, and so, so much more. However, while the vulgarity of the movie is certainly what it's known for, credit also needs to be given to the acting pair of Willem Dafoe and Charlotte Gainsbourg. Gainsbourg in particular delivers a breathtaking performance that deserves to be spoken about far more than it is. Despite its shocking and confronting nature, it's also a profound exploration of parenthood, marriage, and grief. Number one, dumplings. Dumplings burst onto the scene as part of the horror anthology flick Three Extremes. 
While that whole movie could probably be included here, it's safe to say that the extended version of this stomach-churning masterpiece definitely deserves the spot instead. This is because, compared to the other shots, its vulgarity, depravity, and uncomfortable nature are barely up for comparison. The movie follows a former actress named Mrs. Lee as she seeks to regain her husband's affection. She does so by coming to the infamous Aunt May, a former gynecologist who used to perform abortions and now offers a miracle treatment in the form of dumplings that restore one's youth. And if you can't already tell what awful ingredient is in these snacks, well, you're in for a rough ride. This film is unapologetically brutal, as the concept is just so rancid. It even goes further by taking the time to make the eating process as vile as possible, with horrid sound effects and lingering shots, making you think like you're watching an R-rated cut of that one scene in The Lord of the Rings. Besides the overt grossness of it, the film is also an exercise in spiraling tension and desperation, as Mrs. Lee delves further and further into her obsession, leading to a repulsively brilliant finale. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Which of these psychological horrors have you seen? And are there any great, maybe even underrated ones that I should have included here? Let me know, and while you're down there, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.